Hi everyone, Jonathan Silva back here with you for part five of our Power Automate basic series. Now for this video, what we are gonna look at is how to use apply to each. And to really understand what apply to each allows you to do within the flow and some of the restrictions that come along with it. So stay tuned, here we go as we jump right into our flow. So what you have here is just the, the background ready to go for the flow. What you can see is I've pointed to an Excel spreadsheet that we are gonna use for this flow. So let's take a look at the Excel spreadsheet that we have within our list rows present in table, and then take a look at how we can understand the use cases for apply to each and the looping actions all themselves. So here we go. We open up our assignment completion Excel spreadsheet here. What you can see is we only have three columns and four rows in this table that we formatted. Now, one of the main things you need to know about using Excel within Power Automate is that if you wanna be able to use an Excel workbook or spreadsheet, you need to make sure that it is formatted as a table so you can actually pull in that entire table. Now in this case, all I've done was just you know, highlight all, all the elements here, format as tables. What I did make sure to say was that it does have a header as well. And then what you could see here is as you go to the table itself, that you can have it within, within your table design. Here is your table name right there. This is our table one. Okay, keep that in mind as we go to reference that within Power Automate. If you've never worked with Excel before, this is how we can point to that Excel table. Now, what we'd like to do in this case for this scenario is within our flow working with Power Automate is take this table built in Excel and make a copy of it in SharePoint. So take the exact columns, exact rows, we're gonna mark off these rows one by one and add them as four new items into this SharePoint list that I've created that matches the same structure within our columns. On top of that, after we go ahead and copy over the data, what I'd like to also do is send myself an email that contains all of the information from these four rows. In this case, we can either send one email or four separate emails, one for each individual row. So to get started, we're gonna go back into Power Automate here at make.powerautomate.com and get the process started of first creating an item from each row here in Excel. So our first step here again is to add in our list rows present in table. So that's right here. I've pointed to my file here and I also have my table one. Again, that's important that it is formatted as a table so you can actually bring in that table itself. And now the next step that we are gonna use is apply to each. So I'm gonna select plus new step here. It is one of our controls, so I can go right here into our controls and utilize apply to each. Now what apply to each allows us to do is apply the steps that we are gonna pass through to each of the values that we are pulling within our source table. So in this case, we need to, we need to start with selecting the values that we want to pass through to allow all these separate steps to be able to apply to. So in that case, if you click in here for our um, output to pass through, we wanna choose the value list of items from our Excel table that we are passing through the apply to each. Again, the idea here is all of these rows are separate values that we are gonna utilize within our loop, all right? That's gonna to continue to iterate one row after another until it has completed all of the rows from that table. So we wanna make sure we put in all of the values here, often you'll see value list of items as our dynamic content to be able to pass into our loop. Now if I select it here, you could see there it is passed in and now we can add in our action. And in this case, the action we wanna do is to create a row or create an item on this 
list or this SharePoint array that we are working with. So we're gonna come in here and add an action and we can search for create item. So there it is, it's the first one we pop up with SharePoint, create item. And now we can point to the site address and the list name. And now that we have our site address and list name populated here inside of our create item action, we can then match up the column names from our Excel workbook, okay, this table here, to SharePoint. So for title, which is the default column here in SharePoint, we're gonna go ahead and use assignment. I'm gonna click in here. I can use, there it is title, and I will use assignment. Now the next one, name, we do have our dynamic content there for name, there it is. And then finally, the status value. In this case, our status is a choice column in SharePoint. And if ever we are working with a choice column, we wanna make sure we are using the selected value of that, of that choice. If you select this drop down, it's gonna ask you to choose one of these to be written in. If you want it to be carried over from the source table, go ahead and make sure to enter, enter custom value. And then you can go ahead and choose the status. And now, that's it, that's complete for this action that we wanna to have to, where it's creating an item in this location. So now I can come here and hit save, and we can go ahead and test it. Let's go and manually test, and hit test, and let's see what we get. All right, so now what we're seeing is that the apply to each is looping over that table coming from Excel, and we are now writing in each and every single one of these rows as a new item in our Excel table. And you can tell that that's the case when you click on apply to each right here in the header to open up that action and see the outputs. You will see that we are showing one of four which means that our apply to each has looped over four times because there are one, two, three, four rows present in that Excel table. And if you open up the create item action here within our loop, you can see what is gonna be written into our Excel, or excuse me, our SharePoint list. In this case, you can see the output, the title is new marketing campaign, it was assigned to Marshall, and it's in progress. That was our first one. If I go to the second, you could see we now have the second one. Again, we're going one at a time. The second one, we would expect it to be for Austin, and then Matt, and then for myself. So this next one, here it is, Austin, creating a new Azure course, it's in progress. If I go to the third loop in this iteration here, there's Matt, and the fourth one should be myself. And there it is. You can see it's iterated over that entire table one row at a time or one item at a time, one value at a time, and have written that into our SharePoint site. Now, if we go to our SharePoint site here, and I just do a quick refresh of the page, there are the one, two, three, four items that have been taken from the four rows in Excel. That is the, the way that apply to each works. It uses the logic that we place into it, the steps that we put into our apply to each. It's incorporating those into and looking at each and every single value, the value list of items that we're passing in from our previous output that we wanna use to be able to loop over every single row and do those series of actions for it. Now. Let's go ahead and try one more piece here within our apply to each. In this case, what we're gonna do is go ahead and send an email. Now, if I come here, I can choose edit. And if I wanna go ahead and send an email instead of creating the item once again, I can go ahead and just remove the entire apply to each. And I wanna show you something that happens for us when we work with Power Automate. So I'll go ahead and delete that step. And in this case, if I come in here and choose a new step to send an email. I can go ahead and select send an email. I can choose, uh, I'll send it to myself. Okay, and now 
as I put into the subject, I can choose what I'd like to have in the subject. Maybe I can just say uh, the updates for the recent assignments. Okay, just as our subject there. Now in the body, if I want to include any of the information, any of the data coming from that Excel table that I want to pass through here, what I can do is use my dynamic content. Now, if I do this, I can say uh, assigned to, there's a, a colon, and I can choose the name. Now watch what happens the moment I select name, we will see an automatic apply to each is created for us right here. Now that's the case because when we pull in the name, there are four different values, again, that we're pulling from, four different rows that have names that are populating in it, which means when we send this email, because there are separate names, we are gonna send out four separate emails in this case, one for each name. Once you pass that dynamic content in, that's how it's gonna structure itself. That's how it's gonna, gonna automatically build in that loop for you. So now I can say assign to, name, assignment, and I can add in their assignment, and I can put in status, just simply put like this. And now what we'll get if I go ahead and save and test this is I should be receiving four different emails, one for each one of the different rows that we are getting within that Excel table. So I'll go ahead and save and test. Here it goes running again, just as we saw with our create item action, the apply to each is going through the table. It's looking at each and every single value or all the rows present in that table. And it's populating separate emails each time. In this case, we have four emails, again, matching the four rows coming from that Excel table. If I open up the first one, you can see again, assigned to Marshall. Second one, assigned to Austin. Third, Matt, and fourth, there I am, there's my name once again. So now if I come over into my email here, I have, and I'll make these nice and small as I bring them over, there's number one that I can work with here. So I'll make it a little bit smaller if I can grab that corner. Oh my goodness, here it is. Make it, there's one. There's two. There's three. And here's our fourth one. There's number four. All four of them coming at the same time here. Okay, 439 p.m. You can see all of them sent out at the same time. There is our apply to each at work. It's looking at all of the values that we're passing through from an array. So we must pass through in a list, an array, a table to be able to iterate over to apply the steps to each and every single item or each and every single value that's passed through. And then we get four emails because we had four rows. Now there's many, many more things we can do within apply to each as we work with a, a series of different actions. We don't just have one action, we can have many actions. As long as we're passing in that array there, all of those steps will be applied to each and every single row coming from that array or, or item coming from that array, row coming from that table each and every single time. Well, thanks for hanging out with me for this one as we continue to look at some of the Power Automate basics and just to getting a, a nice background, a nice structured understanding of how we can use Power Automate. Stay tuned for our future videos as we continue to look at some of the really core foundational pieces of Microsoft's Power Automate.